UK co-streamer, and we've got uh, two international players here who are just getting right into turn zero action. And you know what, Philip, before we get into too much about our players and their lists, etc., let's go through this turn zero. What are you seeing already? So I had a quick chat with James about this list beforehand, and he normally runs a four-ship scum list, but he's brought three today. And I find that really interesting. I can't tell if he's going to try and break one off and keep two together, and maybe he's looking at clumping the rocks together to do a pincer movement between them. I, I can't tell. Normally he runs his four-ship scum pretty loose. This is a tight clumping with the big rocks there, uh, really lying on Brian's side. What are your thoughts with that with Fen, though? or with a Feng Ghost? Well, I talked about the players ahead of time, and both of them are actually, their strategies are a little bit misaligned. To take mm. the truth. We've got um, Brian, who's actually trying to plan on getting his Fen into the action, and James is hoping to, uh, to one-shot that Fen at the earliest opportunity that he gets. So this rock formation is leaving a whole mass of this entire top left-hand side of the board. Uh, open for the ghosts to do ghost wide maneuvers and boosts and stuff like that, try and range control the TLTs. But, uh, you know, um, James has uh, the ability to, to mitigate a little bit of the, uh, the TLT damage. He's got auto thrusters on, uh, on one of his ships. And he's got, um, well, actually, sorry, two of his ships, I should say. And we're just going to ask our producer to, uh, to switch the overlays because we've got our players uh, reversed. <laughs> it's fine. There's been, uh, there's been, plenty of you know the, as we go. W one of the things that always throws me particularly with this and the uh, the coordinate from the uh, from the Shetherpede is that the ghost player can just plonk his ghost onto a rock coordinate a movement off the rock with the the Shetherpede and suddenly they're in a beautiful position so this really tight rock placement worries me quite a lot for James he doesn't have the luxury of being able to dodge around these rocks uh, and potentially land on one whereas Brian can can fly into it however he wants boost himself off end up in a wonderful position no matter what he does we've got the shake we got the handshake and we're off to turn one I don't say I to completely agree with you Philip I don't really agree or understand I guess with Brian's uh, choice for opening here. He's putting himself in the wide open, which means by the yeah. time he moves his, his big base ship and boosts a couple times, if James dances in the rocks, he's gonna get those obstructions, and the obstructions only help the aces and hurt the ghost. So we're gonna see, we're gonna see what happens here. Mm. What we're trying to uh, hopefully see is, you know, there's a lot of uh, hate on the ghost fen list in the meta right now. Just a and I really think that it's a strong archetype, but there's plenty of lists out there that have a chance to, uh, to be. We saw one in the last game. Um, no, one of the ghost player fen is doing really well players here today, but um, you know what? We're, we're choosing to throw some of these ghost fen lists on stream to show that they're not an auto win against every matchup. There's definitely some matchups where they're an auto win, but uh, it's funny, you know, you, you, X-Wing feels like a, today, at least what we've been noticing is it really feels like there's a giant game of rock, paper, scissors. Totally agreed, totally agreed. But I think the big difference is that the rock here, the, the Ghost Fen list, the, the paper to that is really swarms. And the difference is that the burden of execution for a swarm is so much on the swarm player. And when you're six games in, or even you're sort of two or three games in, you've been setting seven dials, you're thinking through them. You can't just fly them simply, easily, like uh, you can with a two-ship list. You've got to really think about every single movement. So it is rock, paper, scissors, but one of those rocks or one of those papers comes with such a, such a mental burden that I don't always see it. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's run through our... our uh, players right here really quickly and I'm gonna go through uh, Brian and we'll talk a little about him and then you can talk a little about James because the whole theme of this episode is um, talking about the UK Canada international collaboration so um, we've got the uh, the UK versus uh, the US right now Brian uh, Blassie is actually up in Toronto from Albuquerque New Mexico come up to try and win himself a, a bye to worlds by winning the Canadian nationals here um, plays out of a home store called Active Imagination, a member of the 505th Squadron, so big call out to those guys if anybody's watching. Um, he's had a fun day, he says, so far, a bit of a lucky day. He had uh, a couple of dream matchups and some good dice so far. Uh, his strategy for the game, he told us going into this match, is to avoid the corners as much as possible. Uh, he wants to get Fenn's primary weapons into the fight at range one and versus some of these uh, aces and he wants to try and, uh, and mitigate that. He also asked us, of course, to give a big shout out 
um, to the uh, the men and women in uniform of the American uh, Armed Forces. He's a member and uh, and and like to thank them for their service. So we're gonna we're gonna pass him on that that courtesy there. So uh, James Ling is one of the, the local exceedingly good uh, players here in Toronto. Uh, he's a fellow Brit. Uh, he's been across here for about the past year and a half, and I understand he was uh, he was very active in the uh, in in the British scene uh, back in the UK. Um, he was. He was part of the Bristol Vanguard uh, crew out of uh, out of Bristol, where he's from in the UK. Sorry, I'm I'm just spotting a, a very strange maneuver here. This this Fenrau, uh, I think it's a 4K. Looks like he's it. he's clearly playing in this in this lower right hand side corner. Hashtag um, come at me, bro. Wow, if if he's trying to pull the the, the Fen Ghost into that area, yeah, uh, kudos to him. But coming coming back to this one, uh, as I said. James is a real stalwart in the uh, in the Toronto scene here. Typically flies a really solid four-ship scum list. And, and I had a quick chat with him before this to ask about his, uh, his thoughts on this list. So he normally flies three PS9s and a, 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 a Protectorate Starfighter. Uh, but he made the comment that really Sunny Boundary and a lot of the ships he was, he'd been flying in those four scum lists were just so squidgy to the PTL, uh, sorry, to the, uh, the, the TLT on... Uh, uh, on the Ghost Fen build. So he's gone for more auto thrusters. Obviously, auto thrusters and a solid push the limit Fen Rao. Auto thrusters on three can, of course, the ability to uh, to take the PS11. Uh, and then a Talonbane Cobra. Remember, of course, Talonbane, he's got three red dice. So his guidance crisps will change a hit into a crit or anything into a crit. So he's got real firepower to push through on the, against, on the, uh, on, on the Ghost there. So I think solid matchup. Good chance to get that PS11 kill on Fen Rao, and then suddenly the uh, the ghost shenanigans are, are much less uh, less powerful. Great comment from the chat a minute ago about the uh, the notices on Ghost Fen. Um, absolutely agree with you, Catherine. Sorry, whatever your name was there. Uh, I agree that the Ghost Fen list has an entirely much more tilted advantage in a two ship uh, matchup. When the ghost is outnumbered and out arced, and there's munitions and blockers and stress mechanics and all that other fun stuff, you really start to see uh, the vulnerabilities of the VCX exposed. Um, the bow tie is, is a lot easier to get into when you've got multiple repositioning. I love the Star Viper matchup here because those wonky barrel rolls are just magic for keeping yourself in that bow tie. Um, and, and yeah, it's going to see, you know, James is uh, no slouch, but. This is, a, this is a really strong list, and you know Brian's brought the flight assist astromech uh, loadout version, not the R3A2 or the R2 uh, matchup, which we've also seen uh, out in the out in the uh, in the Twitter sphere, if you call it. But uh, yeah, and I mean flight astromech, flight assist astromech is going to help Fen try and reposition and um, keep that. So we've got the coordinate boost from Fen boosting the ghost there. So I, I was wondering if they were just going to keep flying in circles, particularly the, the hard two that Brian did a moment ago with, uh, with a ghost. I did wonder if he just keeps circling around, and then you got a final salvo of nine on nine, but he's really starting to move into that, that asteroid field. So just as a reminder to our viewers, of course, we are uh, coming to you live from the Sheridan Center downtown Toronto. Um, the uh, VWTV Live uh, folks are simultaneously casting two streams today. We got the X-Wing coming on one stream and they've got the uh, the L5R going on the other stream. Uh, we're in round five of six. Um, the uh, the theme for this one is uh, international uh, players and, and their communities. And yeah, we'd just like to give a big shout out to uh, thanks to uh, Victor and Travis for doing everything they can. Absolutely. And I think uh, Victor and Travis are, are so modest. They really don't talk about the great work they do here. Absolutely amazing support of the uh, the X-Wing community. Really great to watch these, to be part of these, to be on stream as well. So thank you, Victor. Thank you, Travis. Amazing job. And Travis, if you don't mind actually just uh, taking this maybe and putting it up here for me so I can actually see this corner. Appreciate it. You folks can't see the chat overlays. We're just making sure we can see the action. Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> So it looks like James is going to continue to dance in the corner here, try and draw the ghost into an engagement. Be interesting to see if Brian takes the bait here, or if he too hard rights to his ship right. Too hard right, and then and then boosts off that rock because that that hard right is going to. 
I've got my left and right confused. He's got your ship, <laughs> ship right going that way. Well, you see, that's a port and starboard. Uh, and, and I think this is a big thing for the British community that we'd be saying port and starboard at I this point in time. I said port and starboard all last week in Michigan. Nobody knew what the hell I was well, talking about. Well, <laughs> I mean, a, a second-rate meta here in North America. But other than that... Oh, um, right in the Felix. Oh, yes. So I I think if a ghost takes a, takes a two-port hard turn, uh, that, that that's going to put him on, on that rock there. Put him on, on that rock. But as you say quite rightly, that the starboard turn is, is really... Uh, it's really clear, but then is he's avoiding the he's avoiding the engagement. But did did he do that that shallow one bank to port uh, to to try and lure James into that asteroid field and get him to chase him? Uh, I can't help but think that Brian is setting him up for something here. I mean, if the ghost goes straight and boosts out of Talonbane's arc, he's laughing. But, uh, you know, if, if Talonbane uh, zooms up forward with a fast maneuver, he could very easily get his cruise missile off this turn. Um, you know, Thweek has is, is brought himself the Glitter Stim in case he catches himself out in the uh, in the open and is going to take four TLT. Uh, See, I, I, I get you on that, but I can't help but think that Talonbane wants to do a four or five straight to get the cruise missile maximum number of dice. And then he, he's almost certainly going to be in position where either he's range one of the ghost or the ghost just seems past him. Uh, so I, I'm really intrigued as to what Talonbane is going to commit to here, whether it is straight forwards into the asteroid or whether he, he, he fakes off to, to either port or starboard on, on, on his side. Very, low, very, very good maneuver here. We've got the ghost deciding that he's going to make uh, his his opponent come to him, and try and just uh, retain that PS11 coordinate boost there. Such value in a shit at the beat. It's amazing. Just so many options coming out of that. Big shout out to our mes amis en la province de Québec. Nous avons uh, des amis uh, de Millennium Condor sur YouTube. Bonjour mes amis. Ooh. Il y a beaucoup des uh, des gens ici uh, aujourd'hui qui viennent de Québec jouer avec nous. So, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, my French is atrocious. It is atrocious. Well done. Thank you, Tim, for speaking fluent yeah. French there. Uh, but I, I just want to point out that, that that boost from the ghost is, is giving me a bit of information. I, I think it tells me, and, it, and I know it will tell James, that the Shetherpeed is not going to be in range to coordinate the ghost action. Yeah. Otherwise, logically, you would have taken the evade there uh, and then boosted later. So I think this puts uh, the, the, the Shetherpeed way out where these aces can rip him apart. I, I'm intrigued as to how James can take advantage of this, but I, I, I suspect that that Shetherpeed is going to be floating around in that open area. Get James text for target lock, realizes Fen is out of range. I don't know if that one hard left would clear the following turn from Fen Rao there. That's tough. Oh. Not taking any chances. He's going to get out. The chat is confirmed. Um, I don't know if the week uh, applied the... Uh, the PS condition or the, uh, the pilot skill condition for somebody like Fen. So, uh, g given that that Thweek style is still down, he he must have mimicked and be sorry mimicked or uh, he must be PS11. Shadowed is the PS1, mimicked is Thank the pilot ability one. Uh, everybody, I everybody in the chat and myself and you yourself all agreeing, Phil. Fen is way too far away from the ghost right here. But the ghost can get back into range of Fen very quickly in one or two turns here. So I think Brian's actually playing a little cat and mouse, trying to draw these aces out of the rock. Uh, and try, but what he's unfortunately done here is given Thweek the ability to go after Fen, staying in the bow tie, and hopefully... Uh, and of course, with, with Brian having the initiative here and moving first and shooting first at PS11, James is really able to arc dodge him. Um, you look at Thweek, you've got fire control system, you can take a focus as your action or you can barrel roll boost, etc. You're going to boost out of that arc, you're going to arc dodge him as much as possible and then really hammer the Sheathapede with continuous fire control system modded target lock uh, shots. Oh, so was that a four or five straight there from Talonbane? That, that looks like a four. That with a target lock cruise missile, uh, crit coming from the guidance crisps. That's going to be a, a, a nasty, nasty shot. Fen is about to board the train to uh, board the train to Painesville, board, board wow. the pain train to uh, downtown Pain Street. Yeah, it's not looking good for him. You know, it's an interesting trade though. Talonbane's worth what thirty-one. Fen's worth nowhere near that. So if you trade Talonbane for uh, Fen here, is it worth it? I mean, Talonbane's the only one of the three ships that James has that doesn't have auto thrusters to combat that TLT fire, that hyper accurate TLT fire. Absolutely. Um, the, the, the other two ships are just so able to arc dodge the ghost. Ooh. Fen doing a range three obstructed shot, Talon being evading. 
And no focus token to strip with Hotshot Copilot. So here's a cruise missile coming in. I've just seen James flip that. Yep, can't spend the target lock on the cruise missile. Good is stimming for four and looks like guidance chips. And guidance crisps there, so is that three hits to crit? A tiddly tea potatoes. Oh, blanked out there. That is a dead Sheathapede. Then goes boom. I know, I want some crisps now as well. Guidance crisps sound delicious. <laughs> well, I, I don't want to distract from the feed, but uh, this is one of the interesting aspects of X-Wing being a multinational game. Uh, you get, of course, the French language pack. You get the German. Uh, I happen to own an Italian Darth Vader. We'll come back to this in a moment, though. We see a, a, a rear shot from the Ghost, range two into Talonbane there, so it's going to be a nasty four shot, or sorry, four red dice on two. Mm, no focus. Ooh. So uh, the Ghost could take two stress tokens here, reroll two of them, mod the Ezra crit, hit once, and then TLT, clear the other one here. Still pull, fully within the uh, yes. realm of reality. Actually, Guaranteed to clear those. The hyper accurate two. modifications with the combination of Ezra and Maul are great. I mean, it's not perfect. There's lots of mechanics that can shut down this combo, but fortunately, James doesn't have one of those. Oh, Ooh, wow. That is nasty. That is not that so great is for Brian. Great. Rolling three dice and glitter stimming for safe. Wow. So the ghost is now double stressed. Pretty clear one of those with a TLT, but then it's still stressed for next turn. So its movement options, particularly pointing to that corner, are, are, are quite limited. End of round TLT on Talonbane. The ghost will retain his stress this turn. Going to have to do a uh, glitter stim. Glitter stim. Avoid it again. Wow, the ghost stays double stressed here. All right. hey, okay, so, so drops so one of the stress there from, uh, from Maul, but still single stressed. You know, the Ghost is going to need a green bank out of there, and it'll give James a turn to uh, to reset his aces. This has really gone very well for Mr. Ling in the first opening shots here. Do you know, what, what, would you even bother to, to reset your aces? I think you know where the Ghost is going to go to. I, I might even just pull them back and, and run for the rest of the game. I, I don't want to sound like, uh, like a French dirty Army? player. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> you know, Napoleon was an amazing strategist. Uh, run away, run away, and, and run away some more. Uh, you've got the time and the space to do that. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's really ideal for Talon Bay, and the Carax fighter has a, uh, a green two bank, so he can just take the two right bank, tweak, and get himself right into the open space and prepare himself for Onslaught on the Ghost. Fen's going to dangle. We're Maybe. See if Fen can get in there and do one of those uh, those shotgun shots. Maybe just pester with, with Thweak for a bit, avoiding with your auto thrusters, try and plink some shields off, and if you don't make... make any progress and you start to, to take a bit of damage and just, just disengage with this. Uh. This is going to be an excellent opportunity for any of our viewers who are having trouble with this list, struggling against how to understand how to play against it. Um, you know, we're, we're uh, into the round now, about 20 minutes, and this is where your win condition is starting to become a reality against the list. And you need to now reassess where you are, where the ghost is, what the ghost is going to do, oh. and start planning the late game. Because you're not going to keep all your ships. I mean, you want to, but it's, it's going to mean very unlikely. Right? The ghost is a hyper-accurate double-shot uh, TLT. You've got no way to shut that down, no stress mechanics. So you've got to plan your approach. It's interesting he's taken the hard two. So he must be depending upon... Sorry, Brian must be depending upon actually shooting uh, James and uh, and doing some damage this turn. Um, I don't know if that leaves his ghost exposed without the evade, but then again, I, I suspect he's taking the risk that James will just disengage. Oh, Ooh, that's close. Really close. That looks like it's on the no wrong. boost. Tyler Tippett. Star Singer 72 asking us not to give away all the secrets of Ghost Fen. Uh, no, we will we will kibosh and squash this list uh, with the full might of the British Empire. Absolutely, British Imperials forever. <laughs> so good disengagement there from Talonbane. No, I, I suspect it was the the obvious manoeuvre. Checks range for the Tiger Lock, make sure it's out of of TLT range, and then uh, he can disengage and do whatever he wants next turn. Big hello to Womp Rat Open, all the way from the Emerald Isle. A good evening to you, sir. 
Ooh, we're getting a wonky Ooh. barrel roll coming up here. I've, I've got to wonder what his thinking was there. Is it engage or disengage from that barrel roll? Clearly an engage, I think, there. Well, Fen, sorry, Thweak is PS11. He took Fen's pilot ability at the beginning mm. of the match. Yes. So, I mean, he's got all the out, he's got all the high pilot skills here, and, and, and James is no fool. He knows that he's not going to be able to take this to the late game uh, with all three ships alive easily. So if I'm going to lose one, which one am I going to lose, when, and what do I need to trade before that ship dies? Right? If, if Talon Bane can take two TLT shots and then get uh, do a range three shot, get into range one, do his five die punch before he dies, and it's not that bad. I agree with you, but he, he does seem to be committing Thweak from that last uh, maneuver. Fen, even if he does a five straight, which I, I suspect will, will, will clear that middle finger rock, um, still isn't going to be a range of, of the Ghost. Talon Bane's going to have to turn. He's going to be at range three, susceptible to the TLTs. And Thweak can, can plow in there, but he's probably going to get a, a primary from the front of the, the Ghost, depending on how, how Brian moves. So uh, I agree with you, Tim but I'm not certain if his other two supporting ships are there for, for Thweek when Thweek needs some support. I mean, you and I are both aligned, uh, Philip. I, I believe that Thweek has the best chance in the late game because of auto thrusters in that barrel roll, but... Yes. Yeah. Now I'm intrigued by Brian's action here. He's, he's pondering an evade, but is he also wondering if he should just swing in and uh, uh, maybe try and get his, his primary to bear on, on Talonbane? Uh, Every time Brian uses a boost, he's adding a damage to the turn that he takes that. It's a zero as early ship that takes an evade. So you're, you're, you're not taking an evade, you're adding a damage. Right? Absolutely. But if you can get that, that five die primary, or even just a four die primary, you can punch through. Uh, In interesting three. call here. If James boosts to get his range three shot, it's one thing. Otherwise, he gets his range one the following turn. No, he's not. He's going to stay punched and take his range one the next turn. Clever girl. Talon Bane swing himself about. That's uh, Death Revive 1991. I agree with you. I personally love the Mimic uh, ability over the Shadowed ability. I like um, I like the idea of taking Fen's pilot ability because you're at your PS4, so you still out PS the Ghost once Fen is dead. Um, you know, Thweek has ended up being a magnificent piece against Miranda um, bombers in general because they can get behind them and just one forward to victory. And then any Star Viper, Gurry, Thweek, hell, a Black Sun Assassin with expertise are, are great against a, a Lothal in the late game. I just just want to quickly call out James's last move with Thweek. I think that that's a, a really stereotypical James Ling maneuver. You, you put yourself in a position with Thweek where it looks like you're going to plow in there, you're going to commit, and then at the last minute you hard want to port out of there, barrel out of the way, and suddenly you've started to play with Brian. James is amazing at this this big picture strategic maneuvering. I think he's really started to pull the, the ghost into the position he wants. He's got all three of his ships outside range three, not being hit by TLTs, but beautifully positioned for next turn to really get in there and hammer the ghost. Right, but look, look at the lovely wide net that, that um, has been cast here. Brian is seeing it. Brian is noticing shit. Fen can two straight. Talonmane can two bank. Thweek can one bank. And I've got three range three shots coming in on him. Absolutely. It's not looking very good for our ghost player here. James is strategic he has, positioning. He still has his evade. He still has all of the sensor jammers. To mitigate it, he's got a hyper accurate TLT, so um, he's now in a position where the burden of execution is on him, not the Aces player. And unless you're a Ghost Fen player that's used to that, like you need to, be, you need to have practice reps against both conditions where you're behind in the late game. Ooh, the hard two there is interesting. He's he's clearly protecting his flank with the the, the croissant rock, and I think he's trying to get himself in a position where even with PTL, uh, Fen can't get himself outside that that arc. But that is an interesting boost. Do you think he's going for the block there and is just going to poop shot? the rest of the ships? I, or? I don't see many ways how he doesn't get the block there. Oh, Fen went for the three bank, so he's definitely getting the so block. He's, he's okay. got the block, but then then coming out the back is... is... Wow, that, that's a neat maneuver from Brian. 
He's taking the taking the aces back into the rocks here. I mean, the ghost has those two hards and, two, and one bank, so he can boost. He can get around those rocks and keep the, the pressure up from his TLT volleys. And uh, you know, James has to do uh, eight six six shields and six shields and two hull to get half health on the ghost. So yes. uh, James is winning on points right now, but all three of James's ships are worth more points than Fen. So. If Brian kills any one of his aces, uh, he's then winning on points until James gets half health on the ghost. And of course, those shenanigans we spoke about at the start, the uh, planting the ghost on a rock, being able to boost it off with the uh, with the coordinate action, now they're not open to Brian. He's really committing himself here to the, to the asteroids and will have to fly safely through them. But then again, with a turret, with a front arc, with a rear arc, there's so much damage he can do, even from a, a moderate placement, that uh, he, he's going to put some damage out. Just to clarify some of the questions flying back uh, and forth in the chat, it is true you are able to assign either of Thweek's uh, condition tokens to um, Zeb Ooh, the shuttle. Three. three going through there from, that looks like Talon Bane shooting. Similarly, the way that um, the uh, score to settle EPT can actually be assigned to the Zeb shuttle during the place forces step. Looks so like a range three. Range three from Thweek, glitter stimming for two. Thweek did pop his glitter stim, excellent. So I, I couldn't see that that die, but I believe the the yes. ghost is either on one or no shields Two at this point. Two more shields down. The ghost has one shield left. Wow, good work from those guys. Now it looks like a, a poop shot from the uh, from the ghost. Rear arc shot. Oh no! He's taking his TLTs on Talon, man. It's not a bad call. Oh, here we go. We're gonna get some mall action. So that's uh, that's one damage on Talon Bane. Uh, looks like a second is going to go through. Mauling the one, getting the three. Talonbane hits. Yeah. So it's two two health left on Talonbane then. Second volley is removing the stress. End of combat TLTs here. Mauling the stress. Ezra for three. That's a hit. Yeah. Moves it after the second volley. And a third hit from that's, Talonbane. That's that's Talonbane out. Wow. Just uh, brutal efficiency there from the 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 Maul, um, Fe, not Fen, Maul Ezra TLT combo. Brutally efficient at, at, at ripping through ships and, and putting four damage on pretty much anything really. Yeah, so um, looks like Fen's gonna have his work cut out for him here. We've got both glitter stims stent from James Ling's side, so he's got nothing more to mitigate the uh, the sensor jammer unless he's spending his focus tokens. Um, James needs another two damage on the ghost to get half health, and then he can win on points if he keeps his aces alive. But you know, he's he's got the right two aces left. Uh, I think Brian made the right choice going after Talonbane, uh, but at the same time, the, the two aces are left are both three of eight dice with auto thrusters. Uh, they've got the ability to reposition, uh, and they're you know, they're, they're both aces. They, they, they've got the ability to get into uh, either the range one bubble uh, or, or into, the, into that bow tie of the ghost. Ryan Blasey showcasing the best type of sportsmanship available from the United States, allowing James to take his FCS after the window. That's how we roll up here, guys. Fly that casual. is sportsmanlike behavior. It's not the Olympics. If it would, Canada would be anything, as long as it was hockey. <laughs> the Canadian women, anyway. I, I, might, I might have just opened a can of worms there. Okay. Well, we're nice. mid-round here. we got uh, about oh. 42 minutes left. Bump there from the ghost. It looked like a one straight. Just oh. goes straight into, uh, straight into Fen. So I'm intrigued now as to what Fen is going to do. Is he going to end up bumping? Oh, no. Sorry. Bad call on my part, ladies and gentlemen. Looks like a one, no, one straight, that that will, yes, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. One straight clearly bumped. It's now getting the ghost out of the way so Fen can make his move. Yep. Fen going to be very happy to probably just barrel roll backwards into the bow tie there. Uh, he's still going to get the TLTs. No, if he barrel rolls backwards as far as he can, my guess is he's probably going to get the, the range one there. Ooh, good point, good point. You can judge that much better than I can. James is just going around the table to make the call himself, see if he'll actually get out of it. Nothing worse than making a barrel roll and still 
staying in the range one rear arc there and just taking five <laughs> dice. Not friendly. Mind you, would you rather have the full TLT shots or would you rather have the range two rear arc shot and then a couple more TLTs? Uh, for, a ship sure. like, for a ship like Fen Rao, the fighter, you want to be as range one as many chances as you get. It's an interesting call. Oh, I can't say I would have done it. Boost? Way. Do you think boost barrel roll here is going to get himself out of the rear arc and at least have auto thrusters? But it's still three green on three red, and of course, red dice are always biased towards more hits and crits than uh, than green di green dice are biased towards evade. So, auto thrusters playing off against Maul and Ezra. E so looks like we're going to get a chance to see what we were talking about earlier with that wonky barrel roll. We can boost in here and lay four dice into the ghost and get his half health points. Fen definitely going to take uh, four TLT volleys here this turn, folks. So we're going to see if uh, if James knows how to roll dice as well as we hope he does. Got my fingers crossed. Absolutely unbiased commentary here from the other Brit, but we, uh, uh, I think we, he will do. Queen on the floor. Oh! Uh, one hit, three crits there, re-rolled into... Sorry, what? one hit, three blanks, re-rolled into... Nope, just hit crit. Hit crit. So two well, hit, one hit, one crit going in on the ghost. Shields are down, that's a crit in. It's a free, so. one. It's a free one, folks. we got damage cockpit coming through on the ghost. So ghost was already moving first, shooting last, so there you go. So, so there's that. no rear arc primary there, but he's got range two to fend. All right, so Fen is going to have to survive. If he dodges one of these TLT volleys, he lives. Three hits straight off. Uh, that's no, nice. That's no, good. he's taken one of those. Okay, we're going to maul one. Take a stress. Reroll that one. And two. It's two, and he's stressed. Yeah. Auto thrusters, he's good there. So the first volley hits, and the maul stress comes off. There yeah. seems to be some discussion there on that stress. It is. It's just oh, it's for clarifying. Off. Regardless which one of the two volleys hits, if it hits, Maul gets to pull off a stress token. Okay, just a two, and looks uh, like auto thrusters one's takes going through. One. Fen. All right, so that's uh, end of round two, TLTs well. here. Mauling one, and re-rolling into three. Fen taking the damage. I so it's Fen on one health. I think it just shows how brutally efficient this, this TLT combo is. Uh, that's a brutal list to come up against. Fen Rao, one of the best arc dodgers, one of the most survivable ships in the game with auto thrusters, five green dice at, at range one, and, and uh, he's taken a withering assault from that TLT fire. And I don't know my green's on a protectorate dial, but looks to be pointing towards the board edge, and I can't see a way he's going to get himself back into that bow tie or range one where he wants to be next turn. Yeah, I mean, Fen's going to do, he's going to have to do his two turn and put him here. If the ghost just leisurely one banks to try and maintain TLT range, though, he's going to take another four hits with uh, target lock focus from Thweek, though. So, I mean, if, so James is half health the ghost here, right? So James is winning on points 53-31. If Fen lives, uh, James wins. So we're gonna see what uh, we're gonna see what happens here. Yeah, yeah. I think it, the uh, w with no disrespect to the ghost player, I think this is just a a, a simple ghost maneuver, a, a one straight or one bank. I can't see where Thweek is going to go to with that rock there. Puts him in a wonderful position to either uh, threaten Thweek with a rear shot and TLT, or if if Fen starts to come in, TLT Fen and. One health left. You saw how brutal that last volley was. He's got a good chance of taking Fen off. I definitely like the one forward from Thweek this turn. If he one forwards, he could probably boost to keep up with the ghost. I mean, if the ghost, if the ghost banks into this gap wow. here. I'd just be worried about that middle finger rock. I oh, we're taking a red maneuver from the ghost here. Part three. Wow. Yep. Well, even though he's stressed, he's going to do a red maneuver. He's going to take the, uh, the Ezra mod and if it hits he gets his TLT volleys right so definitely benefits him just confused as to where James is going to go to with uh, with Thweek though uh, I, I can't judge from here what Thweek's best maneuver is and I fear that it may be a disengage Eey. all right so Fen's probably just going to stay put he might boost to get his position set up for the far one trying for a target lock yeah, that's clear. The range 
Now, would you barrel roll in here? Uh, sorry, uh, boost in here? James definitely is getting himself a little bit closer. There's no risk of being in range three there, but then you're well set up for the next turn, but you know that the ghost is going to run from you. Well, the ghost is just over the half health mark, so it's going to take at least another two turns of solid shots to get it out of there. Don't know if uh, Thweek can carry this torch by himself, but we'll find out. E, I didn't catch that dial, but it looks like a straight. It looks like a two forward, which is tough. Lions week right in the danger. Highway to the danger zone. He's right where he doesn't want to be. It doesn't look like any of those funky barrel rolls are going to give Thweek arc. It might just be worth actually taking a focus here and trying to... Uh, Aye, but you know, five dice, even with a focus on three, you're not going to get auto thrusters on that. I think Thweek's in a dangerous position there. I'd, I'd try and swing him out with a barrel roll. No, i got to be honest with you, man. I disagree. I mean, if Thweek barrel rolls here, you could take two TLT volleys because we know oh, Fen's out of range. Absolutely. So it's either one partially modified shot or it's two TLT volleys. i got to agree with James's logic here. You take, you take the rear die shot here. You know, this is where dice variance really comes in, though. Five dice, are, five reds on three. You imagine you get a whole host of hits and crits and those five dice and blank out on your greens. Yeah, that's that's the dream. Which Brian hasn't. Yeah, he's but already stressed, so he gets hit, hit, crit. And we're going to see what three That is quite avoidable, yeah, isn't it? focus and lives. Nicely done. Good good choice from James there. Well, excellent, too, as well. The ghost re retains its stress right now, so he, he, he has to do... I mean, we're probably going to see a two straight, but the ghost can't. Um, ghost has to do a one straight, two straight, and then boost. So James will probably have an opportunity here to disengage with Thweek and bring both his aces around. James has to take this opportunity to disengage. If he doesn't, he's yeah. continuing with one gun. He needs both guns firing on the zero agility ship to ensure that. Um, ensure that. Uh, thing, you know, Absolutely agreed with you there. And uh, of course, the, the big base ship is so much faster, particularly when it's got a boost, that he can try and keep up with it with his small base ships. But I can't help but think that Brian is always going to get his ghost in a, in a position where he's taking a rear shot and or TLTing. Uh, James is going to have to disengage, come around, and, uh, and engage either from the side or the front of the ghost at this rate. Yeah, I think he's a little bit overextended. He really needs to think about whether or not... Um He's he's in the ideal position to give chase. You know, the ghost has nothing stopping him from just two straighting and evading. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. All right. Well, we're midway through the match here. We're 33 minutes left on the clock. Let's uh, let's just do some um, some recaps of where we're at. So nationals here. We're at round five, and um, after this, we're going to be casting uh, one of the bubble matches uh, for folks who may or may not make day two. Um, we'd like to give a big shout out to our American friends from south of the border who have driven all the way up. We've got some members of uh, Nova, Crates, and we've got some gents from Albuquerque here as well as uh, Brian is waving that flag for them. Uh, we've got Rebels being the pretty much top represented faction today, but you know there's a really interesting mix of ships out there uh, that we've seen, Philip. So uh, I've been, I mean, lots of Imperial Aces, lots of Rebel jank and fun stuff, and we've, uh, we've had a good mix. Definitely gotten two Ghost Fens on a row on the stream table. But we're more interested in the players than the actual lists for these matchups, and I'm really, uh, I'm really enjoying them. We're watching now. Um, recent rules updates we can skip. Any specific rulings made by the TO for this event? Um, nothing that's outside the norms of the regular um, FAQ. And general meta observations? No, I mean, uh, there's like I said, we've got a lot of, uh, we got a lot of the the top tier archetypes that we know. There's harpoons here. Uh, we got one nuked. Uh, NUQD running around there, from Ryan Ferguson, who's the uh, Toronto Regionals Pat champion, and uh, and yeah, um, big shout out again to VWTV Live and uh, to anybody who is not aware. And, and you know what, you probably don't even know this yet, Philip, because you just got here before the game started. Devin and the rest of us at the PTL were finally able to twist Victor and Travis's arm enough to creating their own Patreon 
Oh, so if well you, done, if well like, done, gentlemen. If you like the content that VWTV Live puts out, folks, please feel free to go over to Patreon it's, and show your love. Uh, Travis and Victor are so modest with this. I've said many times uh, they really deserve a lot of praise and a lot of support for this. They're tirelessly out there with one of the best streams uh, for X-Wing, definitely the best stream for, for X-Wing in Canada and North America, uh, and they do it for free. So please support them. Patreon, also Twitch subscriptions. This is an amazing event. This is amazing coverage, and they deserve the help they can get. I love the sloop here. I saw it. That wasn't a sloop. It was just a bank. No, it was just mm. a bank. Mm. So uh, I agree with one of the, the Twitch chat subscribers here. It's time for James to stop chasing the ghost and make the ghost come back to him. Uh, absolutely. But I'm, I'm not certain about Brian's moves. Just to recap there, Brian did a two straight, cleared his stress, and then boosted. And, and I'm not certain what his thinking was with that boost, because... If James had continued to pursue him, he'd have had either a TLT shot or a rear arc shot. James has definitely somewhat disengaged, but in a slightly, I don't know, slightly strange way. He's still pursuing to some degree. He's definitely in the rear arc of the, the ghost, so I don't know what his thinking is there. Of course, no shots, no one in uh, in range. And are we seeing a one straight ghost there? Could take a couple turns to get yeah. out here. Uh, answer to chat, uh, yes, definitely some interesting non-typical uh, meta archetypes we've seen here today. We got one player who's jumping the gun a little bit on the next uh, pack that's been away from FFG. B-Wings, uh, please, no, B-Wings. There are some B-Wings. No, it's actually uh, Don brought himself a, a T-65 U-Wing list Oh, today. yes. And he's actually doing really well. He's two and two. It's on the, on the cusp of making cut for day two, so... Um, I'm really happy to see that James. You know, James not taking our advice here and continuing the. Uh, oh, but uh, but I think he's doing it the right way there. The, the, the ghost is, is definitely going to come about next turn. He's got a great position to to either go in fast and hard with Fen next turn, try and get into that that range one bow tie, or or, or, or to keep distance. I, I think I think James has really got Fen Rao in the right position. It's whether he can coordinate Fen Rao and Thweek's maneuvering over the next few turns. Definitely having to push the week up there to get closer. I don't see anywhere that the ghost can go that it's not taking a range one in arc shot from Fen next turn. So the Fen will have his full uh, title and focus active because he can just five forward boost or five forward thing. So, so Brian has shown, has shown uh, an ability or a desire to, to, to definitely hard two in there and, uh, and boost. I could see him doing a hard two, hard three uh, to port, of course, uh, and then either blocking Fen Rao uh, and TLTing Thweek or, or just taking a primary on him. I think the question for James, and you can see he's, he's pausing here in his dial, is, is what do you do with Fen Rao? Do you assume the ghost will come in hard and fast, or, or do you assume the ghost will keep its distance? I love the way you say assume, by the way. Honestly, I could read. I could. Li I could listen to you just read well, the dictionary. Some, for a some day. of us speak English here. And what do we speak? Canucking? I don't know. I, I can't make sense of it half the time. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, like well, I, I started to digress a, a, a little earlier. And whilst James is putting his dial down and thinking through Fen Rao, I think the main thing to remember is that that we've got very distinctly different uh, metas here in North America. Oh, there's a dial down. So my digression is is going to stop. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting turn to see what happens. So we're definitely getting the two turn we expect. Oh. But we're going to be interested to see if Brian's going to evade and make Fen come to him or if he's going to boost and try and catch Fen. Because if, if Fen five forwards here, Fen can boost focus. If the ghost boosts, the five forward might just land uh, James for uh, a focus uh, target lock shot. Honestly, I'd, I'd boost any day with this one. I, I think Thweek is, is going to have trouble with the, the rocks. Oi, but... Brian knows better than I do. He has taken the evade there. That's clearly the cautious three forward from James, so he is not getting into range one. Is he going to stay at range three there, do you think, Tim? I think a barrel roll left as far back as he possibly can. Sorry, a port side barrel roll Thank you. to the left. Uh, Clarity, as always. Uh, would be the ideal. I don't think... Yeah, I, I don't see... I don't see that barrel roll left being outside of range three, though. I think he's too close. I think he's going to stay in there, which might be barrel roll focus the best idea, or, yeah, I mean. Barrel roll focus, then stressed, but then, then again, you've, you've got this nasty approach from, from Brian. Wow. Uh, going for a target lock there, though. Target lock focus? Yeah, not great. Not a great spot to, uh, for, um, for Fen to be in here. Definitely a tough one. Now, now Thweek. 
to active and uh, yeah, we're not looking. Tim, would, would you leave Thweek there or would you boost in? Because Thweek with a focus range 3 and a tiger lock from fire control system, damn good. Probably not going to be targeted by at least the first TLT volley, though maybe by the second, depending on what damage he does to Fen. I don't even think Thweek's in range here, mate. Oh, I'd, I'd put my money on that one. We'll put a shiny loony on it. How's that sound? <laughs> We've got that funny money, as you know. You've got that funny money with uh, with a very unflattering image of the queen on it. Uh, a lot of people wonder why we have the queen on our money. It's a very simple story. Because she, she's the queen. Because she's awesome. <laughs> so we, ha we, we have a, we have the first holiday of the see, summer. That I would have betted money on that. You would have been a, a I loony I down. Been one cup of coffee richer. One cup of coffee. One cup of coffee poorer. Ooh. So remember, he's. Rerolling that. Looks like Brian forgot Sensor Jammer on that one. So three damage through from that. No two damage two after damage the evade. Fire control system regains the lock. But there was definitely a, uh, a Sensor Jammer miss there. That, that that was an unfortunate one for Brian to forget. Uh, Fen going to reroll the target lock. Just do the one. Ghost gets one die. Yep. And evaded. it's evaded. I'm going to see if Fen's going to be able to dodge. Yeah, see, a lot of Ghost players would take a primary followed up by a TLT volley here. We're going to see what happens. I'd love someone to do the math on that one for me. Oh, sorry, the mathematics if you're British. Uh, I, I don't know which is better, four TLTs or primary and then two TLTs at range three. I would argue that the, two t the four TLT volleys is the best way to sneak one damage in. Mm, I agree with you. But he's gone for the primary. Yeah, he's gone for the primary. He's going to maul that fourth die. So Fen rolls four with auto thrusters and focus. Yeah. So there's a gentleman on the stream called Star Slinger 72 says it's super better. Thank you. Definitely corrects me. And uh, that that was uh, that was effectively four evades from uh, from James. Yep. Okay. So first TLT volley end of combat and maul the one. And roll the third hit. Oh, and three Finn hits. Is dead. Yep, off he goes. So here we go into the late game. A full health week against a limping along ghost. We're going to see if, uh, if James can pull this one out. Brian definitely in a position where he wants to be here. He can four forward boost with the ghost and maintain rear arc and TLT volleys. And the week is going to have his work cut out for him. You know, he's got so many options there. He'd even 5K. Just the, the speed with which the ghost moves, the, the range of, of different positions and locations it can get to, particularly with the boost, it, it's a crazy ship. And the, the focus is really on James getting himself into uh, into the right position, getting himself to range three or into the bow tie, and uh, th th that's a massive burden for him. Well, Thweek can take probably two or three turns of sustained TLT fire without dying. And we have, sorry, our chat bubble is blocking the ghost's health. How many health left on the ghost there, Travis? Five health left on the ghost. Five. So basically, Thweek needs, I would say, two to three turns um, to finish this off. Because Thweek has his fire control. He's going to need his focus for defense. And sensor jammer is still in play. So, I mean, we've got uh, by no means a... Uh, uh, by no means a, uh, a clear win for either player at this point, I would say. Now, Tim, what do you think about dissing, oh, sorry, uh, uh, dock, uh, sorry, undocking the, uh, the, 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 the attack shuttle at this point in time? You know, the Lothal clearly isn't going to die next turn unless there's some horrible uh, you know, crit combo. One can hope. Yeah, but would you, um, would you get the attack shuttle out at this point in time? Not this turn, no. And what's your thinking there? When I used to play, when I used to play ghosts, I very rarely played them with attack shuttles. I usually always preferred taking two of them that had either toys or crew or torpedoes for rear arc shots. Mm. So my my frame of reference is if you have if you have three health or less, it's time to undock the shuttle because if you have if you have three health or less, you need to get rid of that shuttle so it's not launched with a face down damage card. Agreed, but you know, just one damage card, it, it still leaves the uh, the attack shuttle with a fair amount of health. Three versus four, I, I, I get you. 
It depends on where it is. Like if you get your if you get your ghost into a situation where you're you're launching the shuttle and it's advantageous, then then for sure. And it, it certainly isn't advantageous here, from what I can see. You, you'd be doing a what a, a, a hard to to as opposed to to the to the ghost port side, uh, and then you're you're lining yourself up with a rock. I I get you fully. Better to keep going with a ghost than launch the attack shuttle later if needs be. So, you know, it's one of the things that uh, I hope to capture in this match with you, Philip, is just about uh, UK, Canada, US, etc. I mean, perfect example, James Ling here. For anybody watching and who might be chiming in from Wales in the UK, if you went to the Cardiff Regional and you came across all the Nimirandas that were there, you can blame James Ling for that. He came to Toronto and started finding out about Nim Naran, and he texts all his buddies back in the UK. And sure enough, they all show up at the Wales Cardiff Regional. There's like 13 Nim Mirandas. Or Just like that. dirty. And it's the same thing. We watch a lot of American content from Dion and, uh, and the crates and the, and the Minox, etc. And hopefully they watch some of ours. So there's a lot of cross-border, cross-community, cross-ocean uh, collaboration and stream content and all that fun stuff. So we're, a lot of us are getting... Uh, I, a lot of I, us are watching each other's stuff and seeing what we're all flying and, and teching against it, so it's just really fun. I don't want to interrupt that, that those wonderful comments, Tim, but I, I really wonder what Brian is thinking there. He's he's definitely gone into attempt to block. Um, he's winning on points at this point, and do you think he's just attempting to continue to win on points, or or is there something tactical that I'm missing here that that Brian really wants to keep going and and and, 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 and shove his ghost down down Threek's throat? I, I feel like if you're a Ghost Fen player and you don't engage, if you kite, or if you just rely on the dice mods and make your opponent come to you in a situation like this, it's, fa it's rather unsporting. It's just rather yes, but by definition, flying Ghost Fen is rather unsporting. Even more so then. I don't Dreadfully know. so. Dreadfully so. I mean, you can see how much uh, they're the thinking about their next maneuvers here. Um, well, I mean, there, there's about, f I want to say, five in the room out of 57 players here today. And it's a pretty good, pretty good ratio, one in ten of them. Uh, it looks like only two of them so far, including, so Brian, three, are probably in a position to, uh, to qualify for day two. Not entirely sure here. Both the players that we're casting right now are two and two. So they need to actually win their next two matches straight to make the cut. Um, and yeah, I know Billy with Ghost Fen is doing well, and we just saw Mark Kwan lose with Ghost Fen on stream last round, so uh, yeah, I mean, it, a lot of it has to do with your matchups, but yeah, I, I find if you're going to play it, you, you got to be sporting. You know, things, oh, so. absolutely. And I, I think there's a, there's a lot of Ghost Fen hate, and uh, I, I was certainly very, very annoyed the, the, the number of times I've flown it, but... It is a, an exceptionally broad meta at this point in time. I see so many different lists, so many different ways of, of doing well, uh, and, and they all fly in completely different ways. So I think we can we can hate on Ghost Fen, but we've got to admit the fact that it is a, a unique pillar, it is a unique list of, of many, many lists in the meta at this point. A great comment from the stream about whether or not turrets in the game of X-Wing were ever a good idea. Um, you know, it's interesting enough, in Toronto, we actually have access to some of the players who were originally testers in the early rounds. And a lot of them say that, interesting enough, the mechanic on the way that the mobile firing arc on the Shadowcaster works was originally one of the concepts back, bounced back and forth for the way turrets should operate where in the game, where you actually have to semi-aim the turret kind of thing. And I think that would be really cool, but, uh, you know, it's one of those things where... Uh, it's neither here nor there at this point. Turrets are what they are, and it's just another mechanic that people have to plan their strategies around. You know, I, I agree with you, but uh, I think the fundamentals are that if you're not flying at least three B-wings, then uh, you're just a, a dirty, dirty player. Um, turrets or not, it's uh, it's a bad thing to be doing. Now, clearly, uh, Threek has no arc here. First TLT shot. Brian doesn't appear to have mauled anything there. Uh, the, the shot is obstructed, so it's three red and four uh, green, but didn't get anything through. Brian's pausing again, doesn't appear to be uh, to, to be mauling this shot. I assume he's thinking ahead to his next maneuver. He doesn't want to be stressed. Ooh, but he has stressed himself for yeah, three. Like he's taking that, and Thweek clearly does. He's so he spin focuses. Focus yeah. So... Brian's not got a uh, knockout maul for this second round uh, of TLT, so he's going to have to Ezra here for two. 
and cleanly evaded there. Nicely done. And then we're going to see final TLT volley. Okay, uh, two again. And cleanly evaded. Auto thrusters. Ghost is still stressed. Probably going to two bank right here and get out of there. Thweek's going to have to find some way to come about and finish this game. Looks like we might get into the, the very late game on this one. Now, uh, I've got to wonder, does James know that he's uh, he's trailing in points at this point? I, I assume he does. He's going to be playing more aggressively because of that. Uh, and really, I think it's it's Brian's game to, to lose at this point. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, Brian's got the mechanics to deal with uh, Thweek, and he's got position as well. He's got to he can just get into the corner um, and wait for Thweek to come to him. Ideally, he wants to get back into range three, take a primary shot with a TLT volley following up to, uh, to try and, and chase the week. But James knows that um, if he can engage the ghost at range three, do two damage. Then he's threatening it. He's getting it down low enough. Yeah, I mean, if James can get into range three area, damage the ghost and do two damage, he can then engage the ghost at range one and, and PS kill it. It's going to be very. Uh, it's going to be a really tight late game. Agreed, agreed. And it, they've got 17 minutes left, and I, I, I'm sure they're both aware of time. They're, they're sort of speeding up a little bit on their dials. So uh, I can imagine James. James. James can't continue to chase the ghost with just Thweek. To to your point, he's got to get in there. He's got to get some range one damage. So does he have the time to properly disengage Thweek, swing him round, get in there, do the damage? take the Lothal off the board, then take Zeb off. Uh, I think he's got it, but he's going to move decisively to do that at this point. Brian taking the boost, getting around those rocks quicker, so he's probably taking the long way around here to try and gauge weak in the open area. We see James flying fast, playing fast. Definitely range three. James taking a straight and most interesting, hmm. not broadcasting which of the two channels he's going to take next turn. Retaining his FCS. Ah, oh, this could go really out of either way as we get into the late bed. So what do, you, um, do you follow any of the UK uh, main players or podcasts or anything I, like I, that, Philip? Or are you I, fully got integrated to, into Canada? No, I've, I've got to give a shout out to First Earth. I think they do an amazing job, uh, particularly when the gentleman changes into Spanish and fluent Spanish to talk on the stream. He did that recently and I think that the Dutch nationals, which confused the hell out of me, but, you know, really amazing the way the, uh, they, they provide great coverage of uh, most of the European major championships. Um, also really interesting, I, I I never played, oh, four straight from the ghost here. Brian is definitely running and getting past those uh, those asteroids. But I I never played X-Wing in uh, in the, the UK. Uh, I started to see it when I was spending a lot of time in New York. Uh, and it's interesting to see the subtle variations in, in meta. Um, I always feel like the, the US and North America has a, a very distinct meta flavor, which is quite, quite different from the British. And certainly different from even like the Polish meta. There's definitely a European versus North American difference. Yeah, I mean, like, I've, I, I try to follow some of the European content just to see what's going over there and have something to talk to about it whenever we do any of our, uh, our casts. But I can't agree with you more about how different things are from what I see here from what I see there. I had the opportunity to speak to the 186 boys recently, who are just top gentlemen, who are actually planning on flying across the pond and joining us on the party bus to world, Worlds this year. And, you know, they, they talk about what they run into there. And it's the same thing here. You get frustrating archetypes. You get rock, paper, scissors type stuff sometimes. But ultimately, it's like we were talking about earlier. Um, when you get into competitive X-Wing versus like League Knight type stuff. Yeah, we got no th no Ooh. range on three. Today. So I'm, I'm really intrigued by James's boost there. I, I thought he was going to do a curvy barrel roll to get effectively uh, north of, of, of that little Ewok uh, rock. But instead, he boosted down. Um, I, I can't help but think that maybe lining himself up, curvy barrel roll, pointing to the left-hand side of the board edge, pointing towards where the ghost is going to go, w would have been the better maneuver. I, I'm now slightly thrown by what James's next maneuver will be. He clearly has a plan. He's clearly got a superior plan to anything I could have come up with, but it, it's thrown me a little. 
Well, I know that it's a purely uh, audio medium, but I can in tell our viewers that, ironically enough, uh, there is another match going on not far from our stream table that is equally as a nail-biter. It's actually uh, Billy Chandler's Ghost Fan against John Grasser's Palp Aces. Um, that is happening right over there, and from what I can see, it looks like uh, the shuttle is down, the ghost is damaged, Quiz and Quick Draw still alive, and Fen looks like he's still scuttling around there. So. Oh, we, we are seeing the, oh uh, the attack shuttle. Zeb. Wow. So the double TLT volleys are gone. That was a really ballsy move by Brian. Brian's thinking to himself, uh, I can two-turn the ghost and catch Thweek here. Because if James doesn't disengage, he's yeah. in big trouble. I, I think it's a, it's a wonderful strategic maneuver there. Oh, Ooh oh yeah. See now, now I gotta say, that's really not the way I would have done that. But that's okay. No, because you know what? Now if if, if James can ignore the ghost, which is gonna take at least two or three turns to come about, and just kill and just the attack shuttle, and points. then we're on points. Yeah. Yes. Now he's he's got the ability to 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 bank to get out of there, but. I can't help but think that the, the curvy barrel roll would have put him on the rock, and therefore a straight barrel would have been a neat one to have there. He's definitely range three of the, yeah, the ghost. See, this, this is a great... Oh, would you spend it? Yeah. yeah. No sensor jammer there because he didn't roll a hit. No evade. Ghost down to two, two health. health. Only getting two TLT volleys to return fire against. No. Is that rear arc? Be primary. I, I think Brian keeps making this so mistake of not quad TLTing, though. That's that's the problem. So one of the things, of course, that we forget, of course, is the shuttle's been launched and he has no rear arc shot. Good point. Yeah, Sorry. The TLT volley coming. Uh, so we're going to probably maul that. There we go, three hits. Auto thrusters takes his shield, so now Thweek has no shields but four health still. And that's one. Auto thrust is almost certain to kick in. He's Taking good. A there as well. Okay, so Thweek can PS kill the ghost. And if he survives the shots from Zeb, he lives. Zeb can do his two turn and be about here, just over the rock. And if Thweek doesn't. Um, maintain range on the ghost, he's in big trouble. Now, w would you actually keep going after the ghost, or would you yes, go after the attack 100%. shuttle? Ghost has two health left, and you're going to have a fully modded shot. So, Thwe Zeb almost can't kill Thweek unless Thweek blanks out. If he's at range three, he gets auto thrusters. It's yeah, you know, I, I, I agree with you, but that just seems like the obvious maneuver, and I'm, I'm always looking for that non-obvious one. You know where the ghost is going to be. You probably know where Zeb is going to be. Uh, I, I can imagine James trying to do a Maybe even a hard one to, to port with his Thweek. I oh, know, interesting, uh, interesting strategic position. And James is definitely the strategic player. Clearly thinking about that down, clearly thinking about where the attack shuttle is going to be. There's a follow-up. Oh, yeah, you can see attack shuttle swinging in there. He's clearly expecting something like a, a two or three bank to, to starboard from, from James's Thweek. Please setting himself up there. Ghost. What? Three banking, trying to keep the range to keep that TLT uh, fire on, on Thweek. I think the question now is how how janky and how aggressive is, is James going to play this? Is he going to end up in that attack shuttle kill box with potential TLTs, or is, is he going to swing out of there? Good point. The the ghost is actually PS0. That was definitely moving out of uh, out of sequence. And James has taken it. He's he's taken that janky maneuver. James has realized he's got shot. he's got plenty of time to work with here. So I mean, if the ghost gets back into range, you can finish that. Otherwise, Zeb's there. Zeb probably not going to get a shot for I would say the rest of the game. So now Thweek has to try and finish Zeb. James has decided to not get greedy, and I can't say I disagree with his thinking, Philip. I, I agree with you on this one. Uh, clearly, he's, he's checking the dial for the attack shuttle. You've got to remember that 
very, very few players flying Fen Ghost up and end up uh, deploying the, the attack shuttle. So uh, I, I think most of us are forgetting what exactly it does. It, it just seems to be there for the second TLT shot, but it doesn't actually have a darn. It actually shoots, and it's got three red dice. It's, uh, it's a nasty little four bugger. At four at range one. Oh, yes. Zeb's pilot ability is also kind of handy as a shuttle, too. He cancels crits first. So, you know, it's hard to push a crit through unless you... Uh, you should do all the bonus stuff. Big shout out on the stream to uh, William Landry. Decided to join us at uh, Canadian Nationals. All right. The uh, the interesting thing that we're gonna have here now is Tweek has to try and keep up with Zeb. I mean, Zeb has a one hard, but it's red. So yeah. So he can two turn barrel roll, but then it can catch Tweek's one harm. Really, what I think Brian's gonna try and do with with Zeb here is just gum up. The week for a turn or two to try and get the ghost back into uh, back into play here. I, I agree with you, but I, I just think most of, of Thweek's maneuvers, the the hard one, etc., the ability to, to curvy barrel, I'll have him dancing to what, to around. What barrel roll? Uh, curvy barrel roll. That's the official FFG term. Um, curvy no. barrel roll. Wonky curvy. Yeah. He's uh, he's going to be playing with him. The attack shuttle is is certainly prey to to Thweek. Interesting to see. Oh, we've got a, a one bank there. He didn't go for the stressing uh, hard one from the uh, the attack shuttle. I, I I can't help but think that either running away with the attack shuttle and trying to pull Thweek towards the, the ghost, or just getting out of there would have helped. He's clearly going for the barrel roll here to, to block Thweek. Buys him time to, to get the ghost back in. But... Yeah, as, as the stream is pointing out, the sloop would have been good. He, he, he has blocked him, but that could have been a 50-50 sloop from the, uh, for, from, from the Star Viper and a, a wonderful broadside into the, into the attack shuttle. It's a block. It's a good move on Brian's part, but it could have been very different. Worst thing is that the week's FCS target lock is still on the ghost. Even if he does get uh, Zeb in art, he's got to... Uh... That was a, a quick dial play by James. Uh, I've got to assume he's, he's going to think that Brian's going to do the, the same shenanigans. Uh, so do you think he's going for a, a sloop at this point with the, the Star Viper? Or certainly any K-turn is going to put him on the croissant. And the, the hard one, I, I would have thought Brian's going to... Sorry, continues. rewind. Put him on the what? O on the croissant. That would be the rock on the left-hand side? Yes, that would be the croissant-shaped rock on the left-hand side. Seriously, if I could, if I get a dictionary out of my bag, will you just read it for the next <laughs> six minutes? Absolutely. Aardvark, artichoke, accomplice. Oh, and I'm I'm showing the limits of my English, aren't I? <laughs> the, the, actually, James James has quite quickly picked up his dial. And he's thinking about something else. I've I've got to wonder what's going through his mind. Uh, is he going to be blocked by Brian again? Is he going to stop Brian blocking him? Uh, what what's what's going on? So we're a little bit ahead of the clock, folks. Ours says 535. There is five minutes left. So we could do a two straight wonky barrel roll. Or, I mean, if, mm. if, if Zeb goes to starboard, he's uh, starboard of the middle finger, then he's, he's in good he's in a bit. But the chat is absolutely right. I, I think Brian has gone incredibly faster with the ghost than he's needed to. He's trying to get the ghost out and about and back into the fight. But that's not advantageous. If, if the ghost gets into range three, then Thweek can PS kill him. You know, I've, I, I've got to respectfully disagree with you on that one. I, I think given the time left, he's, he's got to get the ghost back into the, into the fight. And there's plenty of space for him to play around. You, you see this, this um, bank boost here. Puts him in a wonderful position to, to loop around the sort of bottom right of the board. Continue plinking away with TLT and do some major damage to, to Thweek. Uh, I think he's got the right timing on this. Okay, so Zeb taking a too hard right, trying to uh, to gum up Thweek for a little bit more. Let's see if James was sold on on trying to go after Zeb or whether or not he yeah. is actually trying to uh, realize that it's time to go kill that ghost. I mean, the, the, the stream makes a very good point. Why, why would Brian come back in? Um, I, I, I absolutely agree. But remember, this isn't a system open series. This isn't pure wins. There is an MOV component to this. Uh, and particularly as we're, we're going into effectively eight rounds, you, you 
do want to be getting good MOV from your games. Maybe Brian's gambling a bit too much, but if he can take three count, it's going to be all much all all the better for him. I think James is probably going to buy what Brian is selling here, and it's going to hurt him in the long run. Yeah. Oh yes. Oh yes. Particularly tokenless Zeb. Four shots on, uh, or four red dice on two. Uh, I'm going to say this as quiet as I can because I'm really interested. To see if James changes his FCS here, he's going to be a is that two hits. Two hits. And two blanks and shields, shields off Zeb. Yeah, well, that's a good point. So this is a, a good indication. But do you think James? hasn't swapped the Tiger Lock. Do you think he's doing that because he really intends to go after the Ghost, or because he's just psyching out Brian and throwing him? Looks like James is making the right call here and not changing his FCS. We'll see if um, we'll see if he says that. Oh, a big hello to the 186 Squadron from Simon Ture on the uh, YouTube chat. I'm glad to see you boys are watching. Can't imagine what time it is your time there. Boy. Okay, this is going to be uh, the clutch turn, I think. If Thweek doesn't kill one of these ships here, he is about to board the uh, the pain train to oh, downtown yeah. Canada. Oh, yeah. Downtown Mississauga. Downtown Mississauga. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Philip, as, as, as a UK expat, cheering your UK expat on here, I'm curious if you noted the artwork on the Canadian National uh, alt art cards that have been given out today. That, that is a, a wonderful alt art card. Uh, I don't know if you've shown the stream, but we have uh, an Emperor Palpatine as Queen Elizabeth. Um, and I think this is a really interesting one for the North American audience. Um, when Brits watch uh, the Star Wars trilogy, it's really a story of these wonderful Imperials who are bringing order and law to the galaxy, and these dreadful rebels who, you know, blow up the first Death Star. It, it, it's a dreadful thing. We we really regard it as a very sad film. Do you have any idea what that did to their credit rating? Blowing up big up a thing like that. Absolutely dreadful. And and then. You start to watch The Empire Strikes Back, and, and most Brits were coming out of that, that, the cinema having seen that, going, this is amazing. Like, finally, we're getting law and order, and the, the Imperials are taking back the, uh, the, the galaxy. And then imagine the end of, of Return of the Jedi. You think that the, 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 uh, the Imperium is, is going to take back control, and suddenly it's all blasted. It, it, it's a very, very different trilogy if you're British to American. So we're just going to make sure that the ghost activates first here, because it's PS0. And if it doesn't, we'll make sure that that happens. <laughs> uh, Stream is pointing out that uh, that Palp really should be Theresa May. I, I don't think Theresa May has any ability. Uh, maybe it was an inverse Palp where you get to change any dice that's actually useful, like a crit, into anything that's ineffectual. But even that's too much, too much control and too much quality from her. So uh, there was a hard one from the uh, from the attack shuttle. I assume he's thinking that. <sighs> I'm just thinking he can set up a block here. Let's put the barrel roll. Oh, of course, he's remembered that he's stressed. That, that was a barrel roll template down. Realized he couldn't do it. We're also, uh, we've made a commitment to our players on stream today not to break the fourth wall unless it changes the game state. Oh, it, I didn't. If that, had been, uh, if that had been a three bank, then Zeb's thing would have very much changed it here. I don't, I'm not sure well, why I'm Zeb is getting a barrel roll at this point. Oh, the streams point out he has Chopper, so uh, he's, he's, he's taken a damage. Taking a damage to get that bump in, uh, that's a gutsy maneuver and, and looks like a good call at this point. But he's, he's bumped him to make sure he's not got an action, but he's still got three health left and he's got two TLT shots. I feel like the ghost is going to go Slash down. Last round. No sensor jammer. Hit crit. Uh, this die is the game right here. It's absolutely the game. That's it. Oh. Hit and crit. So no, that was that was hit and crit. Yep, that's it. Wow. Now, that's it for the ghost. Comes down to the final roll. Great play by James. Great play by Brian. Clearly some, some uh, amazing thinking through of what the other player is doing, particularly with that final block, but it just didn't quite work out for Brian. Yep, so no uh, no sensor jammer on that last one because he rolled uh, crit I blank and re-rolled into hit crit. Spent the evade, took the